फ्रेंड्स आर टीवी में सभी का स्वागत है अ वॉम वेलकम टू आर टीवी इन टूडेज दिस एपिसोड एक संवाद वी हैव विद अस वन ऑफ द ब्रिलियंट एंड एमिनेंट आर्टिस्ट ऑफ आर कंट्री गुरुदास शनोय हुज बेस्ड इन बेंगलोर फ्रेंड्स गुरुदास शनोय इज वन सच इंटेलिजेंट आर्टिस्ट हु नोज हाउ टू प्ले विद हिज लाइंस फॉर्म्स एंड कलर्स टू मेक ब्रिलियंट कंपोजिशंस transforming a simple landscape to an artistic work piece and uh, to know more of his experiences his art what he thinks his values his philosophy let us talk to him and know about him gurudarshan i a warm welcome to art tv thank you so much thank you it's a great pleasure to have you with us on our platform pleasure to be with your channel yes gurdas uh your work of art a brilliant piece wherein you 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 are so intelligent that you are you can transform a simple landscape to an artistic uh, piece i would now i would like to know a lot of details of your of the way how you think your thought process and all but before that i would like to know how your journey began because i am aware because i i know that you are a son to another great artist of that time ds shanoy whose work uh, i really admire and i personally am a great fan of his work so uh, was uh, was very keen to know how this entire concept this idea this uh, your journey with art began and how is it going on right now see uh, i born and brought up Uh, the family my dad was a painter just like you said and uh, i think people say that art was in my blood i have been seeing all those art activities uh, when he used to do in urupi and meeting a lot of artists who used to come to my house used to stay with them and discuss art it was always uh, you know there was a doors always open for me to listen to them and you know see their works because uh, that time urupi was one of the uh, very important place in karnataka the art activities were fully fully uh, you know what you flourishing because there was a uh, uh, you know you can uh, say south kannada art council was uh, born in urupi you know that my mm-hmm. father started it it's called as a south kannada art council this group was so active and uh, there was once again my father had a, a, a you know gallery called shringar art gallery in urupi it's one of the yeah. uh, most prominent gallery was those days in uh, karnataka and the activities are always on there if you ask me it is painting exhibition graphic exhibition craft exhibition you ask everything was there in that small space called shringar art gallery mm-hmm. and along with that south kannada art council is always organized art festival in urupi this was about uh, sometime four days and sometime seven days this mm-hmm. art activities are so important uh, for the people of urupi and people staying around the district because they always come to see the different artists show i mean pay, uh, to uh, paintings and to listen to them and their slide shows and the discussion this festival happened every year literally in udupi and uh, my father always used to uh, you know uh, uh, call some of the some of his very well known uh, artist friends from uh, other part of the country and they used to come and spend time and they used to show their slides and about their work and they used to talk about their work so this mm-hmm. was the greatest opening for me to see you know kind of a different artworks and uh, you, uh, like you asked me about the my journey how it started and you know what inspired me what inspired me was the nature around me in udupi mm-hmm. one side was arabian sea another side was the western ghats and it was the most beautiful place on the earth every 5 6 kilometers you find a river the paddy green paddy fields coconut groves temple town so many temple art you know the festivities yakshagana bhutas kolas everything inspired me there 
the monsoon inspired me the smell of a soil inspired me it is like uh, i can say the first love to nature it's all started from udupi mm. and uh, what my father used to do he had a school called kalabharati school of art he used to take his students uh, <laughs> uh, to the spot painting you know in different areas one of the sundays we used to pack the lunch box mm-hmm. uh, early morning the colors and water colors you know uh, brushes and you know everything kit and go to some different spots i remember uh, the barkur i remember the wada pandeshwara some of the areas i just like to say mm-hmm. but different mm-hmm. places and used to sit and paint that spot mm-hmm. the nature sometime or some ruins mm-hmm. or you know some beautiful uh, coconut guru you know these all you know he showed us how you can handle a watercolor it's a basic basically just a basic how you can handle watercolor you know when mm-hmm. you sit in front of a uh, you know a place so this was my first lesson towards you know how to paint a nature you know how to see the light how the effect of light on the nature or you know a kind of a, a object there whatever it is but i've learned fr- these things from uh, you know my initial uh, uh, what you call uh, teaching us uh, all this you know for, with the group used to go for a spot painting competition lessons. i mean spot yeah yes lessons yes correct sorry sometime i forget what he say no, so no, no. Uh, yeah so uh, this is something uh, uh, was very important to me uh, those days uh, uh, you know i extensively did watercolors and uh, i used to go alone sometime and sit in front of uh, some very nice place and start painting and learn about a uh, nature and you know a kind of a uh, you know it was study to me and i used to always come and show it to my dad you know and used to impress him that's how it started mhm excellent and i think uh, later on uh, you moved to bangalore and then to an art school and then to baroda yeah i uh, see what happened was after 12th uh, i uh, in some art wanted to my father asked me you can do whatever you want uh, you know it's a choice is up to you if you want to become an artist you you can or you know anything else but i think i know only that time only how to paint and you know how to enjoy myself with my colors and my canvases so i applied to uh, baroda faculty of fine arts but at the same time we shifted to bangalore you know from mm-hmm. udupi to bangalore because bangalore was the place for the artists because uh, uh, you know you can always exhibit there the lot of galleries were there in those days and uh, the city is important uh, a part you know usually for the artists so he shifted to bangalore and uh, i applied to baroda i got admission in faculty of fine arts ms university baroda mm-hmm. yeah that uh, and uh, from there actually the first year basically you go to all the departments sculpture graphics or ceramic a little bit of ceramic and uh, 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 i know and painting was the main subject for me but what i learned was once again there was a freedom in baroda school of art to go to any of this department and learn you know mm-hmm. uh, in the evenings once you completed your classes if you wanted to go to a woodcut and do a graphic uh, department and do a woodcut they allowed it or you wanted to do a little bit of sculpture they allowed it there and there was no time bar you know the any working student there was no time bar that's mm-hmm. why i was very much interested to learn the different materials so you know i always did some uh, sculpting a little bit of ceramic and you know my and and uh, i did a lot of woodcuts there so along with my painting yes so it it gave me a, a good practical experience working with the, a lot of senior art i mean the, uh, art students also and i had a great faculty basically my teachers some of the best i have seen jairam patel and gulam mohammad sheik vinod cha jyoti bhat and rini rini dumal and raghav kaneria in sculpture these are one of the best teachers you know i'm lucky to have them you know so yeah and once i finished four years i think by 85 88 i completed you know that four four year period i mm-hmm. came back to bangalore i started working uh, uh you know in my dad's studio itself because we are we had a small studio so he was using it so i started using next to 
um, it was a little difficult but you know i tried about a year or two uh, doing uh, uh, you know some of my uh, you know what you call the work after the school of art so mm-hmm. try to get into a, a a little different zone there because all these four years you study then they say then you forget everything then you restart once again you wanted to uh, you know they, they they say like that so you own so meanwhile what happened was i did one exhibition also in venkatapa art gallery mm-hmm. uh, that is i think very early uh, period i uh, i think it's somewhere in early 90s mm-hmm. so in uh, 1991 i think uh, one day early morning uh, mr hussein came to my house you know i call him baba so mm-hmm. he was he built a uh, museum in bangalore it was a very beautiful museum it's called mm-hmm. as a hussein sankalana and mm-hmm. uh, he came to meet my dad because he usually come early in the morning sometime or you know there's no time so this time it was early around uh, 7:30 8 o'clock so mm-hmm. my dad opened the door he was standing there he said shanai please come you should see my new museum so he took us all there to see yeah, the museum that. yeah yeah mm-hmm. and i still remember uh, he came with one ambassador with a driver and uh, he took us all to show the museum mm-hmm. and after sh- showing his uh, new museum and these new works uh, then uh, we had a lunch also there then after that uh, he said uh, while before just leaving he said i am looking for a uh, artist you know to look after my museum and uh, you know uh, as a curator because he wanted mm-hmm. particularly in the artists you know so he said my father i know can you uh, tell us give me some good names so you know or suggest somebody mm-hmm. so dad said okay i will uh, give me a day or two so then you know we left from there i was listening all this conversation so after coming back home i asked my dad you know why can't i apply there because mm-hmm. uh, you know that day <laughs> Uh, that time it was uh, for me uh, hussein was a such a great uh, artist and just to be there learning from him it was very important to me so i th- thought this is a great opportunity you know mm-hmm. to <laughs> become a uh, you know <laughs> to work in his museum and learn something from him true, true. so this was some turning point happened in this so what happened was my dad said you know i can't talk to him if you want you can call him and say whatever you wanted to say Mm-hmm. and uh, what, uh, just listen what he says in case he is interested you can go and meet him so i called him uh, the same evening and asked him uh, can i uh, apply for that job you know he said really okay do one thing come tomorrow and talk to me so mm-hmm. i went next day i spoke to him he said okay great uh, but one he said i'll give you this job in one condition you should not waste your time when the, there is no there is there is not much work here very less work but whenever you have a free time you should in pain because it, the museum was so big there was extra rooms there so mm-hmm. one of the rooms at the back side you should paint that so you should not waste see there's one condition i'll give the job this sensitive uh, stay i mean uh, suggestion he gave me you know i was always uh, thank him because my painting activities continued even there also because you know without interrupting even he gave me a job so this happened in 91 i think you know so i was and meanwhile what i was doing i was working there and i was looking after the museum as a curator did a lot of activities art activities there exhibitions curated a couple of his shows and uh, this happened then along with that you know uh, i started my murals somebody asked me uh, you know for you know that time my uh, 94 i think you know my uh, dad undergoing a bypass he didn't recover from the operation table so he uh, so we uh, i lost him so that's a very crucial period of my life you know and um, he was supposed to do a work for some very uh, important uh, a uh, company uh, you know some mural is supposed to handle that work and they asked me can you do that for us so mm. i said i will try so there's a very big metal work it is uh, uh, so i completed that mural uh, very nicely because first time i'm handling a, a work on metal so that 
the next another journey started my life as a, a muralist so i did a lot of murals after that that's another part of my life so mm-hmm. and side by side along with this museum looking after <clears throat> the you know as a working as with him i started my murals also excellent so, yeah this was uh, uh, quite a uh, important part of my life because see what happened was uh, like i said earlier that going to different departments and working in faculty of fine arts baroda taught me how to handle different materials this helped me yeah. a lot lot in my murals doing actually yes so yes. i did a, a different mediums and i worked on different mediums you name it it started with the terracotta ceramic glass wood fiber wood metal fiber yeah metal and many cement mediums. cement yes yeah, same cement you you name it you know so I, know, I, know. i don't know the body of work i've created in about after that about 10 12 till 2017 i have mm-hmm. did a lot of murals for a corporates for the financial institution for uh, educational institutions and the private houses i worked with a lot of architects a lot of builders and a lot of corporate houses and that was a very big journey actually from that period maybe that particular particular mural uh, gave me a, a lot of uh, uh, flexibility to uh, uh, dabble in different material and uh, create about two dimensional work uh, you know in uh, many ways and uh, it was i enjoyed thoroughly all these uh, murals so that is another journey of uh, uh, you know Excellent. my in my life yes yeah 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 i'll come to that murals oh. later guru uh, yeah yeah sorry yeah yeah but one one very curious question sorry yeah your journey began in udupi now yes. udupi is a place which is where nature sings green yes. patch greenery everything yes. later on you came to bangalore at that time bangalore yeah. was supposed to be the green city now it's a concrete jungle but that time it was yes. so you have a lot of like green and lot of like <clears throat> then you went to baroda the baroda is another uh, beautiful place with lot of it's a colorful place cultural place yes. educational place yes being in udupi bangalore baroda you are groomed in a different environment yeah but later on as a subject of your art you have taken yeah. something which is very rustic that is the stones and rocks of hampi yes now on one side your inspiration is a green patch but your output here or this thing is come out from the rocks it's yeah. very rustic it is very folk it is very uh, what do you say uh, 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 it's very original natural yeah yeah of course now how did this happen living udupi green roofs uh, the paddy fields and all how did the rocks appear and see uh, it happens about 5 uh, 6 years back it, when i visited hampi mm-hmm. see uh, i've heard a lot about hampi and i have not seen it but about 5 6 years back i visited hampi and for me the hampi is not only the scenic space with the monolithic rocks and the tungabhadra is coming inside that all that heritage uh, sites and you know those beautiful monuments but more than that you know it for me it was like you know a connection with uh, uh, like ramayana because i've heard in stories that hampi was uh, oskishkinda you know hanuman born Correct. there Correct. and uh, and uh, i know that all uh you know that ramayana time my uh, uh, you know the stories i have listened to them and from the that yuga from ramayana yuga till the 14th century you know that tuluva dynasty you know krishna devaraya period all they spoke about the flourished dynasty was and that muttu ratna howla you know kind of the market they used to be you know one of the greatest kingdom on this earth you know they said in this country so uh, you know that entire story along with this lovely scenic most beautiful those monolithic rocks everything inspired me there 
it was the story the history the you know and the landscape and when i was there on the top of anjanadri mountain you know i climbed that anjanadri mountain that particular day i remember mm-hmm. it was on the top you can see 180 almost 360 degree view mm-hmm. in between that that was most beautiful sight i have seen it in my life the sun falling through the clouds in between those rocks you know it was like magic you have to feel it you know you have to be there to feel it you have to be on the top of the mountain to see how the tungabhadra comes in between and the rocky and uh, you know areas and then the then the beautiful uh, uh, you know for the paddy fields in between and you know such a green and it's all mixed it's so beautiful and i immediately started doing some photography there i had a, a my camera and uh, and i started doing photography and some of these spots and immediately i know i always carry a sketchbook i did some rough sketches i came back to my room and went next day to other spaces i started sketching a lot it's all started from that hampi it's a complete uh, feel you know you know that i i can't explain that how the emotions were but it was the it's come from my heart that entire series of yeah because well, uh, uh, your your body of work your body of work uh, you know it has uh, uh, your paintings as uh, you have transformed transformed a simple landscape into a beautiful artistic uh, yes. piece the reason why i say that is maybe the nature along udupi or western ghats the nature sings there but the rocks speak now it needs uh, you know we have uh, 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 we have excellent uh, drama uh, dramatists we have excellent uh, poets writers who have who have given this sort of uh, uh, analogy or saying that rocks speak but as a painter you transform that that language very beautifully visually yes so that the rocks speaking the silent dialogue that is very much evident in your paintings and that was uh, that uh, always uh, made me keen in curious saying that guru is from this part but how did he go and capture this part which is altogether on other side yes yeah yeah but, no, but uh, one thing yeah uh, the top, uh, this uh, you know see like it's all started after udupi and after you know uh, Uh, you know about 2005 2006 i started traveling a lot mm-hmm. see it happened uh, uh, you know hampi came later but earlier than that i did uh, uh, you know i traveled extensively to europe basically i wanted to see the civilization i wanted to understand you know learn their history you know and the beautiful monumental buildings their museums their work of art you know this inspired me you know my early series i called them as a europe studio and you know urban scapes so because even urban scapes in india also i started traveling in different places that series was it came earlier so it's all inspired when i started traveling like i said how come from udupi to the uh, hampi but in in between that from udupi then baroda then came back to bangalore then i started traveling to different part of the world like especially europe europe was for me was the most beautiful destination i went to venice florence i and many this beautiful uh, uh, places then prague and you know paris and you know f- for me these are the places which you know that my travel inspired me a lot to see a different things you know a different uh, kind of a uh, uh, you know of, uh, places in the Uh, my life these are the most important travel part is inspired me a lot yeah that um, <clears throat> your paintings are very colorful very colorful very beautiful such a very uh, a rustic a very rock area you have transformed it to so colorful it looks like but but when i see your drawings or when i see your landscapes i feel the no doubt the 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 attraction or the uh, this thing part may be the color but the real poetry is in the lines yes uh, yeah it's like 
so because i saw your charcoal drawing as well i've yes. seen that and uh, when i see your paintings as well uh i can see the i can see the nice flow of lines the the your the visual language the poetry the vocabulary is coming out from there it's like uh, the colors are adding more value to it as a, this is what i feel i don't know about it well, can no, you no. just throw something on your lines or your because yes. the way you see your entire composition if i if i see it has three the three basic grammar elements of art lines forms colors the way you compose the match and it simply becomes a magic very magic and artistic piece of thing and then when i deeply go and try to see it is the the poetry is in the lines so can you just throw some light on that yeah see uh, the drawing was always there every uh, painting of mine i have a strong drawing i always a draw the the whole process starts with my charcoal drawing because see what happened in baroda time old building when i was studying in uh, baroda faculty of fine arts i used to go to this old uh, uh, areas you know and the old buildings and you know and some of this uh, uh, you know commerce faculty and this uh, they are very old uh, uh, buildings they are it's very beautiful to draw i started sitting in front and i started drawing them you know and the museum of baroda i did many of these woodcuts uh, you know baroda museum and baroda buildings because they are giving some stories and i always like those architectural elements in my uh, work so i started sitting in front started understanding the perspective and you know the kind of fine lines there so i did a lot of drawings this drawings was always my passion to do this uh, you know the, uh, you know uh, every painting there was a drawing of mine because unless i do the drawing i can't proceed you know i can't uh, travel further so drawings was my main element in my work yes that and, I, I, and love charcoal i love charcoal because it makes some kind of a sound there when you draw it on the canvas true it, it, it is it gives me a enormous amount of a grip on my uh, you know the drawing because once i started in the sound and the kind of a, the flow i get in charcoal uh, you know i enjoy charcoal drawing every painting when i come in front of the empty canvas when i work on a kind of a, a what i am going to do everything starts from a simple drawing on canvas sometime i go such a detail i feel i should not paint it you know so i should leave it like that so so because i need that definite uh, uh, you know for forms that before i start the you know the paint painting yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i extend the it on oil actually because yeah. of the oil have a that kind of a transparency and a kind of a quality in oil uh, i think uh, i don't get it in other mediums you know so that's why i i love oils and if anything sometime what happen when you when in that flow sometimes you tend to go a little bit of uh, uh, you know of, uh, in little different ways even it gets you next day you come back and you can rework on that area so that is yeah. a flexibility in oil always so i love yeah. that but only thing you have to have a patience to let it dry you know then you can True. work on it. otherwise True. it get mixed up you know it's very that way it's very uh, you have to have that uh, patience yeah. and be very careful with that part yes yeah because your your canvas is a beautiful combination of vertical and horizontal lines and yes. the way of the uh, where they <laughs> what do you say they cross over or they match or mix or something automatically the forms starts appearing from there it's yes. like but there is a there is another beautiful thing which i have observed that see in your, uh, your lines on your canvas they are strong bold black lines yes right in middle of the canvas when you have such strong bold lines making them is not an easy task because black will invade will hijack the entire compose entire all color yes but on the other hand inside those forms you have such beautiful colors maybe red blue green yellow combination of this 
in spite of the domination of the black lines these colors are still powerful enough to nullify them and they really make a very nice dance there it's like you know it's like a garba happening in gujarat what do you say it's like you know a yeah. huge dance of so how, how do you play around with these colors and still maintain that uh, uh, you know try to try uh, and keep a good control over the black uh i don't know i think uh, uh, i i start when i'm painting you know i don't decide what color and you know what i'm going to i'll just start with some color then somewhere i start traveling inside my canvas you know inside my landscape or inside my cityscapes or inside my europe or my inside my hampi so when i travel i see these colors basically these colors i learned from nature itself you know if you sit and observe nature the colors always there but when when what happens when the light falls on these places then magic starts there this is very beautiful if you see 13th 14th century 15th century masters work you see that dramatic light effects you know so these these are lighting effects you know gives a painting a different dimension you know you see all my work have that feel of light and you know play of light that creates a lot of gradations up and downs and you know a strong but the color comes very very naturally to me you know i don't decide that i should go on a red but you know maybe all this 25 or 30 years experience you know after i you know now the colors you know a kind of for me it comes by itself i don't really uh thing that i should use today red or blue or yellow or anything you know when my i finish my drawing i start seeing colors by itself you know yeah let me have this sometime what happened it becomes completely reversible i yeah. i don't really think so much deep what should i do but the colors comes by itself to me yeah yeah exactly uh, um, uh um the most important aspect for a for a painting to be very brilliant this is what i think is the value of abstraction that it draws or it it yes. that's a important part now just like how for a person a personality is important it is that personality which attracts us not that person you know similarly in a painting it is that abstraction which attracts us which adds value which makes it brilliant otherwise it is it remains a simple uh, uh, a normal uh, uh, a landscape like when i said uh, when i say that uh, you transform a simple normal landscape to an artistic that is you add lot of value and give it a personality like like and that maybe in visual language we call it as abstraction can you throw some light on the on the on the value of abstraction in your paintings because that is something which is the entire driving force that is the divinity that is the entire uh, you know that is the palette which holds all your the poetry of lines the the dance of colors everything but it is that abstraction that value of abstraction which gives a personality to that gurudas shanois paintings like so can you throw some light on that abstraction uh it comes naturally to me see after so many years of painting my experience when we work you tend to go little bit beyond your normal uh comfortability level here you know you tend to experiment a lot through a texture or through a line or or through a, a kind of a, a bold patch here there but it is always that abstraction was always there in the nature you know i always learn some of these abstraction the forms you know when you watch very closely the nature it always there or if you look into a, a you know a kind of a, a old buildings or you know the old monuments these are some of these rough textures and everything it's always there but when i paint these things it comes so naturally to me you know and people i know many people say you know you you do the abstraction but for me this comes i uh, you know naturally to me i don't attempt to do abstract or anything in that true, true. but it maybe uh, it is uh, you know uh, i try to get uh, you know the form 
in a maybe i see it in a very different way there or you know uh, the kind of uh, use of knife or you know use of that rough brush you know sometime what happened it gives a dimension that you know it gives a dimension it gives that a kind of extra layer to your a uh, normal uh, thing and it gives a different effect and maybe because of so many experience of my working that abst abstraction came very natural to me and i use i use it very effortlessly in my work then you know maybe uh, many people like you said you might call it as a abstraction but that kind of a quality of that boldness and the textures and the kind of a dry brush work it comes naturally to me because i observe a lot in those things in nature you know yeah even in the rocks if you see a rock very closely the kind of a texture it have and the kind of uh, you know the roughness and you know uh, thing when the light falls on that you know you feel that so clearly and you know uh, you know that i think maybe after observing so much and you know doing a lot of drawings i think it just came to me by itself yeah so i am natural in this part of it you know it gets into a it's my the final phase of my work that boldness comes you know i, I start know. with proper line drawings and you know thing then why once i started traveling in the inside of my work and all these things comes by keep on watching painting come back watch a little bit go once again work come watch another about 15 20 minutes this conversation between a uh, work and me you know maybe that goes into a, a kind of a further effects in my work so it gets into a more uh, bolder and more maybe sometimes the forms becoming minimalistic you know there's no much detail but you know there is a uh, depth and this texture that create that effect what i supposed to uh, you know comes from my uh, i know i understand i understand it is a, a it is artist artist language which i'm talking here but yeah whatever i'm explaining to you maybe you understand as an artist you know? true true i do i do yes. and i also understand that to uh, uh, explain abstraction is impossible because yeah. it's just like you can't explain the fragrance of a flower uh, though yeah, they say it, everything is abstract the form is a myth yeah <laughs> true 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 but definitely it highlights it presents the 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 value of uh, the value and the fineness and the and and the beauty of the color that has that has spread over your mind and soul yes so somewhere there you get it like but another interesting aspect guru this uh, uh, i have seen a couple of your murals yeah. no doubt your murals may be commissioned work or maybe it is like let's let's uh, keeping that as aside yeah okay suppose if i see your mural and when i see your painting your mural is more like structured disciplined strict it's like it looks like a military rule there matlab like in the sense very strict nice discipline very handsome but at the other side your paintings they are they are simply a stretch of freedom okay they are they are like you know they are go lucky they are uh uh you know it's like you dance your mood yes it's, yes yeah. Whereas, yeah i agree with that i agree with that when i see your murals like, so uh, what i want to know is what goes in your mind what's happening in your mind when you have to do a such a uh, like a strict a disciplined organized structure a mural and when you have to do a go lucky dance like so don't you think maybe maybe the medium constraints maybe the medium constraint the medium i am using there maybe i am experimenting maybe i am learning with those uh, mediums i am using yeah sometimes uh, you know uh, you know i get a subjects to work on this sometimes you know uh, these mural works uh, in sometimes uh, suggestions by an architect or uh, the client or you know they ask me to do the certain kind of a work uh, you know a subject you subject oriented work then once again when i do mural i have to always understand whether it's a interior or exterior according to that i have to use the medium which which it's in not by hand it have to be durable also so maybe 
you know that uh you know you know that part also i always is be in my mind what you said just now i think that was the most brilliant observation you made yes i can say very simple language is maybe the constraint in the medium i am using it you know maybe i must i must have gone a little more further to experiment or more you know so maybe i didn't do it yes no but, but what what definitely i do understand because when you when you take a commissioned work or when you when you have to do something uh, a work which is assigned by someone else definitely your 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 focus is that that person the client or that your whoever has given you he should be happy yes so there you you are you are, you are very we are very uh, our our not only yours even mine when i have to do when i do some commission i see that end of the day the the uh, the 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 client or the person who has assigned is impressed yes is happy it's whereas most... on the canvas you are expressing whereas here you are impressing like <laughs> no so it happens see uh, some of my murals uh you must see uh, especially i did it for uh, intel head office you know both in uh, uh, both places in bangalore you uh, most of my murals uh, in the latest period i concentrated on five elements of nature in that i had a freedom by my own to experiment and work on uh, you know using different uh, material like i used a very beautiful colors in that also so those are the some of the murals uh, you know gave me much pleasure uh, you know because they left entire thing to me so they told me you do whatever you wanted to do it but when it comes there uh, you know for those murals i enjoyed the most because uh, i had my own freedom there so some of these murals i really enjoyed because i worked on five elements of nature excellent excellent is there any such concept now because and i mean this question comes to my mind because you have worked with different mediums with different concepts right and when it comes to painting and drawing you have different concept whereas when now is there any such concept which gurudas shanoi thinks like this is something which is like you know i would like to do this once in life yaar aisa concept with this material yaar i always want to work with ceramics so okay love <laughs> no and passion i don't know i always love that material ceramic because of the kind of color it produces you know and the kind of uh, variations in the colors you can uh, work on ceramic that always inspired me and this is one place i really want to explore the and the, the want to you know what my woodcuts also oh. and this is also i was i'm waiting for some more time now so let me see how i can do that because i have no time and you know i have no a kind of a space there to uh, you know experiment and you know the comfortability is more now so i can do this now so i can really look forward to seeing this kind of maybe yeah i'll go and experiment with this <laughs> yeah i find this question because uh, nana patekar once said that after he saw nata samrat uh, play which was uh, played by uh, dr sri ram lagu it was like one of the beautiful plays i think i have watched that play around about some 40 or 50 times mind blowing nata samrat and the later on the film but uh, nana patekar had that thing in his mind uh, going in his like you know in my lifetime i want to play nata samrat one day to such a level and that that thing was going boiling uh, with uh, inside him so much and after he finished that film nata samrat like he says there's a change in my personality now i feel like that thing is released out and he carried that boiling aspect for so many years because he wanted to play that nata samrat this thing that role what dr sri ram lagu had played is it okay so uh, so i always see this like you know in many of the theater personalities i have seen this so uh, uh, i always uh, have this question uh, or this curiosity among the visual artists like is there any boiling point as such like this is one thing that i want to do yesterday i was speaking to uh, uh, bhagwan rampure who's a sculptor from uh, who's based in solapur and i asked him like he had that one concept saying that yaar main ek karna chahta hu i want to do this one as a so i was like you know because <clears throat> see even in your paintings also you have such huge size of work 
So I always like, you know, is it the material that Gurudas would love to play or something like, or is the size of the canvas or maybe another landscape? Are you done with Hampi? Would you like to explore another piece of land? Something like, what do you think? Yes, it comes to me organically. You know, see the change, what happens in the change sometimes, you know, it one leads to another. It comes to me automatically. Maybe my next series, you know, what I don't know, maybe, you know, during this couple of this another uh, year or something, you know, uh, you know, I'm something in my mind which, which I want to explore it. From a long time, I have been planning to do that. So it's let me uh, give you a surprise in that way. Let me, you know, that it should surprise me first. So let me do that uh, in, in my work. And uh, I, I don't want to say at the moment because uh, these are something is, uh, you know, in my mind which have to transform into a uh, part. Mm -hmm. So it takes a little bit of uh, breathing space and the comfort inside to come out yes. and uh, then, uh, you know, then work on it. So something is in my mind and it, I've already started working on it actually. But lovely, lovely. piece by piece, piece by piece somewhere. Exactly. But exactly. I, so, connect, I connected the dots at, at this moment. Let me uh, take some more time to get into that uh, zone, to comfort zone and I can work. So excellent. very soon, maybe another year. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'll not take much time. I think I've taken much time, but just one or two questions with you. Like... Uh, <clears throat> You have been working with this. Uh, there is a, I think you have uh, formed something called as Shanoi Foundation or something. Yes. yes wherein, yes, yes. Uh, wherein you you give a platform to the new emerging talents who are brilliant yep. and who who are promising in the future. Like yes. So yes. Uh, and uh, I guess it is something uh, to do with in a memory of your late father. Am I right with that? Yes. Yes. So, yeah, uh, could you just uh, tell us something about uh, that, that beautiful gesture, what you're doing? See, uh, my father always, uh, uh, you know, I remember him because he was the man who started this many art movements in Karnataka, like South Kerala Art Council and Karnataka Kalamera, Art Friend. There is many groups he was there. His view was uh, to work together and show the people, you know, what they are doing time to time. It's maybe through a kalamela or getting into a kind of a group, work together and do an exhibition. And he preferably, always he was, used to tell me, whenever you are do, do a show, the, you, know, you must have a catalog. It doesn't matter whether it's a black and white or anything. It's a document, you know, in the in future, in the, in the, in the history, uh, after some years, people will get that folder or something, you know, this period you have done this. So he always used to tell me, and he, he used to tell me, see, more than anybody, when when you complete fine art, you come out, then that period was so crucial for any artist. You know, many galleries won't take your work, and you know you are in that kind of a stage. You really, uh, you know, need of uh, you know uh, financial help, or you have to work somewhere and do your painting. When you work somewhere and do your painting, you lose a lot of time there. So this is so crucial period for any artist's life. You know? So that's why you know, I, I, I started in the memory of my dad because he's always supported younger artists. Even in Karnataka Kalamela, you should see most of the artists who came there, they are very young artists. They have come from all the parts of Karnataka to you know, assemble in Vector Park Gallery. So in memory of his, you know, I started, me and my wife, I started... Uh, uh, this uh, called Shane Art Foundation. Mm. And uh, uh, what we do, uh, in fact, this is also, uh, it started by both uh, Amita and myself, this uh, Shane Art Foundation. Mm -hmm. you know, she was uh, also, uh, uh, you know, feel the same way like I feel about the younger artist. She's seen me, you know, kind of my period after the school of art and, you know, the journey till now. So mm -hmm. we started the Shanae Art Foundation and we give the grants to them, you know, like two, uh, you know, it started about many years back, you know, and we do sponsor the catalogs. If the good artists, they want to exhibit and if we, uh, uh, you know, for, like the work, we sponsor the catalog and we select the grant. See, we, they don't apply uh, and get the grant. 
we watch them from these years because we are concentrating at the moment artists from the Karnataka itself, you know, the younger artists. Mm-hmm. So we watch them, we see their work, and we see the continuity of their work at least uh, two three years. Then you know we give them the grant, and also we have an award called uh, you know uh, one award, two awards usually one or two awards we give. is emerging artist award a uh, artist who are really working from so many years and you know is uh, you know he evolved phenomenally in this uh, you know this period so we give them award uh, you know a, a cash award to them and uh, uh, that yeah those are the things you know we uh, and you know and we do exhibit their work every after 3 4 years uh, whoever get the grant and the award we call them and we show their work to the people you know these are the period they have done the work you know Excellent. so this is what we are concentrating and ours is not a huge uh, foundation you know we started by both of us and uh, uh, we do substantial uh, in the sense uh, <laughs> yeah we yeah. recognize many of these younger talents yeah yeah definitely i've seen that i've seen yeah. that it's a huge list of artists and that's a great gesture so beautiful just uh, contributions because i i i remember vasudev kamat telling me saying that achievements the world will forget with time but it is a contribution which will be remembered on this i i don't say much about it but you know a certain period uh uh-huh. recognize this artist and we feel you know good to be uh, you know a part of their journey absolutely ellardo alil seve ah alil is a very nice very nice word yeah very nice yeah, yeah yeah and one one final question gurudas yeah. i will not take much time now you have explored so much of art indian contemporary art you have traveled the world across yeah. you have seen many masters you have met many masters you have worked with many masters and all yes so today if at all you see in the indian indian scenario i would like you to highlight two things one what is the best thing or the compromise or, or the promising promising thing that's happening one good thing one best thing one promising thing saying that this is going to take india or our indian art scenery to another level yeah and the yeah. second one is like this is one negative bad thing saying this is an issue so one good and one demerit one bad point as per you see uh, the exposure today is uh, a very brilliant thing today in the uh, you know in the pressing one button you know in internet you can reach many of the museum many of the artists you know you can abundantly see their work you know it's it's that is one thing a very positive thing happened the exposure these days artists are youngsters are getting whether the exhibitions are coming from the abroad here or binales or you know all this show coming from uh, abroad and many shows are happening in the cities that is a great exposure that is one thing brilliant and the second the negative part what you said was uh, we don't we ha- should have a lot of galleries we don't have many galleries like other day in one of the interviews i mentioned in paris alone you know because why i say always paris because it's more, one of the more, most true of, uh, the louvre is there so i always love that uh, you know most museum uh, uh, in paris so in paris itself there is about 500 to 600 galleries in bangalore we hardly have about 10 to 12 galleries so we need a more galleries more exposure to the people also see one thing uh, uh, i wanted to tell you before i end this we need art as a main subject in school level perfect physics chemistry mathematics you know the languages you should incorporate art in general one subject and it should be compulsory yes. so you this anger generation more exposure towards the art music theater or you know whatever the uh, you know that is very important i feel from my heart because Perfect. we are getting such a brilliant uh, you know uh, these days the youngsters are so brilliant when art comes into a main subject you know that will be a uh, you know they become more creative you know True. in their own subject also so that the journey should be a much beautiful way yeah they will learn how to view a painting forget about yeah. buying and everything they will learn how to view a painting yes what yes. is aesthetics <laughs> that's yeah 
but uh, anyway uh, gurudas i have taken a lot of time of yours and uh, it's been a very nice brilliant discussion with you i liked it thank you very much for being with us thank you thank you person it's great yeah. talking to you because you know from a long time you know the discussion we are supposed to have it so i think finally we did this <laughs> yes thank you yeah yeah, yeah. friends i i believe that you you all would love this discussion with gurudas shanoi do like like share comment and subscribe our tv and let us know what you think about this thank you very much for being thank you gurudas shanoi once again thank you thank you